I want to uh, put a background in here. Uh, like I said, you can do these in a variety of ways and a variety of different paper sizes. So this one, I put it on a larger piece of paper and it just, the white just surrounds it and it kind of swallows it up. So I thought I would just put a dark background in the back. And I'm, I'm gonna just gently wet some of this because I don't want any hard edges, but I don't want it to be sopping wet. So it's just gonna be a little damp. So when I put the paint on, I can control it a little bit better and I can uh, actually do some graded washing as well as and some fading out as I come across. So I'm just going to very lightly do this and hopefully it will uh, do what I want it to. A lot of times when I do these backgrounds and I don't want it to get into the flower itself I tilt it away, especially if it is wet, and I keep plenty of paper towels around to either blot or um, wipe my brush. So I'm just going to start with this over here in this corner, and then as I get, every time I dip into the paint, I'm going to use a little bit different color. Okay, I just want it to be really rich and dark though, and if it's too wet, uh, you know, it's going to fade out a little lighter but um, hopefully I won't have to worry about that. Also, this is a good way to even add some little uh, air, other little shapes to your flowers if you want to leave a little light area here and there or even leave a, another flower showing. You can do that. So it's, it's a kind of a neat way to do a little bit of negative painting that you really haven't had to work too hard for. I think about the colors that are in the bouquet and so I want some of that in the background and maybe a darker richer color. If I were if I were at home probably I might even these little areas that are uh, going off the page here that are finer little areas I might even mask those out but I think we can probably paint around them without any problem here. The idea is to work pretty quickly as you go. And then that way, you don't have to worry about messing it up. It's hard to mess it up when you paint like this though, because it, if you work quickly and you uh, kind of just keep a fresh eye about what you're doing, it tends to always look pretty good. Yeah back over here with more blue. Work really quickly, a nice juicy wash. Just adding a little drama to this to give it more of a wow, look at those flowers in that sunlight kind of feel. And as we get around here, we can kind of fade it out a little bit lighter as we come down. And then, uh, actually, all the way across there. I don't worry too much about the little areas like that that might need a little color. I can go back and do those uh, later if I need to. Just mainly trying to get this um, background so that it looks like it's uh, sort of caught between the sunlight and some sort of a shadow, maybe on a kitchen table or uh, something else. Okay, now we'll let that sit a minute. Uh, you can, at this point, you can kind of play with it a little bit and actually use a brush and Spatter, do some spattering into that wet wash. To add a little variety to what's in the background there. 
or you can also just use clear water. That'll just add a little texture, just a little atmosphere right in there. Okay, all right. Now, I would let that dry, and then I would probably come back on this particular one and darken some of these greens, and I would probably do a little more spattering here, and I would probably increase the shadow here. But a lot of times when I put a dark background like this, and I, wanna, I want it to dry, just so I, and then I'll go back and, and change, uh, you know, other things. So you can always put it in a mat and look at it and decide where else you need to, where else you need to paint. Okay, thank you.